Well, I don't know about you, but I'm having a good time. I am enjoying myself with this series. I might be stretching it with a part three, so we'll see how this does. This might be the last one. It really depends on what you guys want to see. If you do like this video and you like this series, give this video a like and let me know down in the comments. If you missed parts one and two, I'm going to link something up here for you to get caught up. If you have no idea what the heck we're talking about, this is part three to a series that I have called five upgrades to five eternally hyped fragrances. A few things we need to get out of the way before we dive into this. First of all, it is kind of what it sounds like, except the word upgrade can be exchanged with the word alternative because what any of us find good or bad is obviously subjective. There's a lot of people in this world and there's something for everyone. That includes Secretions Magnifique. If you're a Secretions Magnifique lover out there, maybe don't make yourself known. Tread lightly. These alternatives are not going to be fragrances that are the same scent but smell better, are cheaper alternatives, outperform their counterparts, or are more appealing than their counterparts. The most important thing I want you to heed and take away from this video. The fragrances that I am replacing are not bad fragrances. Many of them I like. In this case, I like all of them to varying degrees and I wear all of them to varying degrees. I'm simply just trying to imbue some newness into your subscription feed. So yes, we can keep talking about these super hype fragrances. You're going to find them on a lot of other channels, but they've been talked about enough. We know everything about them. Why not bring in some new blood? As I've mentioned in the past few videos, Fragrantica, albeit not perfect, Perfect, by any means, is a pretty decent barometer for a fragrance's popularity here in Fragcom online, not the industry abroad, but here on the internet. Why? Because of Fragrantica's voting system. Two of the highest impact ways you can interface with a fragrance on Fragrantica is commenting and voting. There's always going to be more votes on any one fragrance because it's just simply easier to do. It takes way less time. You just click the one you like. You don't have to type anything. I haven't done the math, but Typically, when it comes to human behavior, you can split things up into thirds. So a third of people vote all the time. A third of people might vote occasionally here and there, and a third of people will never vote. It's not that perfect, but just for approximations, I think it kind of evens out most of the time. So a fragrance with multiple thousands of votes on Fragrantica is a fragrance that has a lot of traffic in the fragrance community abroad because most of it is actually invisible. It's not reflected in those numbers. I've been using my fragrance Second Soul as an example of this. This fragrance has been out for about a year now. As of this video, it's been a little bit over a year, which blows my mind. Those of you who've checked it out and have enjoyed it, I am beyond humbled. And thank you so much for your support and your belief in me. If you haven't checked it out yet, it's probably not going to make it through the end of the year. Time is running out. That's all I'm going to say. If you go on Fragrantica, currently Second Soul stands at 114 votes on Fragrantica after one full year of exposure and just time on the market and I can assure you that more than 114 people have experienced this fragrance. By comparison, YSL's Myself, their newest release that just came out I believe this summer within the past few months is already approaching 900 votes. I have tried it, it was meh, but it's got a lot of traffic which is to be expected from a brand like YSL. But it is an example that time is not always the most important factor when it comes to dissemination, especially here on the Internet. So it's anybody's game. With all that being said, let's dive right into these five fragrances and their alternatives. Something I have not done in the past couple episodes is share the actual number of votes, at least currently to the day of this recording for each of the original fragrances, because I figured they would be out of date not long from now. But I figured just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, I will share the current numbers, but just keep in mind. When you watch this video somewhere in the future, these numbers may already be obsolete. Our first fragrance, very, very hyped here. It is a fragrance that I used to not like, but I have grown to enjoy it more and more when I've worn it in what I consider to be the appropriate occasions. I save it for the late fall and the winter. It's got to be cold for me. This is Parfum de Marly Carlisle. And Carlisle currently has about 3,000 total votes on Fragrantica. That's a lot, which obviously pales in comparison to the number of people we can be sure have experienced this fragrance. And I describe this fragrance in three words as dark, classy, and bold. It is a sweet, warm, spicy, dark patchouli bomb. There is a little bit of this kind of dark apple pie feel, but it's earthy and damp and woody and a little bit brash. And I think what contributes to its brash 
perfectionist is its performance. And honestly, I think its performance is really what makes it as liked as it is more so than its scent. That might sound crazy to you, but tell me there aren't people out here in this community that value performance over scent. As long as it lasts all day long and that they know others can smell it, it's highly rated. That's ludicrous, but once we step away from that, I get it. Nonetheless, a fragrance I would offer as an alternative to Carlisle. I believe this is also relatively dark, quite classy, and pretty bold. Not for everyone here. This is Santal Descendis from Amarud. I haven't talked about this one in some time. I actually haven't worn it in some time, but for a period of time when I got it a few years ago, it was my favorite from the house. I think it is a close second between this and Lunar Vetiver, but this is good stuff. As far as their darker fragrances go, I love this stuff. It does have a dark woody sweetness. There's a little bit of an absinthe feel, some curry leaf. There is this interesting, almost culinary feeling to the scent, but it is kind of wrapped up in a warm, creamy, but slightly dusty, woody smoothness. A little bit smoky, the incense contributes to a little bit of a textural edge to the scent. It gives it some substance. Ultimately, it comes across as a very elegant, again, classy fragrance that I like to wear for cooler evenings when I'm dressed up a little bit more similar to Carlisle, maybe a little bit more complex than Carlisle, and maybe to some people, perhaps a little bit more interesting. I'm not gonna say it's quite as strong as Carlisle, but it is no slouch. Let me know if you've tried Santal des Indies from Amarud. A fragrance that I describe as alluring, smooth, yet a little bit edgy. Tom Ford Ombre Leather. Again, no stranger, this one is super hyped. Tom Ford Ombre Leather currently has a whopping almost eight and a half thousand votes. That is crazy. That's very, very, very high. Just to give you an example, two of the highest numbers I've seen thus far, and I haven't scoured every fragrance. Aventus is currently sitting around that 16,000 mark. Dior Sauvage is currently sitting around that 19,000 mark. So a lot of people know about this. If you haven't yet smelled this, I don't know why or how, but check it out. It is a very supple, sweet leather scent. It's kind of a toned down, more approachable version of Tuscan leather, so to speak, more of like a suede type of leather rather than this rough old leather armchair kind of feel that you get from Tuscan leather. Very ashy. Nothing ashy here. Very smooth around the edges. Very attractive. I see why people like it but there's more we can talk about. Alluring smooth yet a little bit edgy. Also in a black bottle here but not anymore. This is an older bottle so sorry you can't really find this one very easily anymore, but still the same fragrance as far as I know. Guerlain L'Omidial Intense does have a very beautiful sweetness, kind of like a cherry almond. So it's kind of creamy, syrupy, smooth, but there is a very intense spiciness from chili pepper and from some cardamom. Bring in a little bit of this sexy allure. And also you have quite a bit of smoke in here, which brings the slight dark edge here. So I think it can function in the very same way. It has an alluring feel to it, but it is a little bit bad boy-ish, so to speak. Black leather jacket vibes, and I think most people are gonna find this very attractive. It doesn't get enough talk. I highly recommend checking out Lomidial Intense, still, I think, my favorite flanker in the collection. Let's talk about this discontinued and currently overpriced fragrance from Armani Aqua Di Gio Profumo. I believe this has essentially been replaced by the new Parfum Flanker, which I have not yet tried. I hear they're not exactly the same, but if they could come out with a flanker that fills the role that the Profumo once held, I think that one is it, but I do hear that people still prefer this. So if you have this, I hear you don't need the Parfum. I'll hope to try it sometime. But Aqua Di Gio Profumo currently has over 12,000 votes. Popular stuff. I describe it as aquatic, mysterious, serious yet clean. It's a dark, smoky aquatic, but it still carries the approachability of the original Aqua Di Gio. Ultimately has a cleanliness, a clean, masculine vibe that is perhaps a little bit more mature than the original. It is my favorite flanker I've tried to date, even though I haven't tried the newest one yet, albeit I don't love it, but I can appreciate it. And I was really trying to be careful about what I would replace Aqua Di Gio Profumo with. I almost didn't include this because I feel like it's not completely under the radar. It is a little bit hype these days, but it still has nothing on Aqua Di Gio in terms of its notoriety, at least at this point in time. From Kenzo, this is the best alternative I can offer. This is Kenzo Ohm Eau de Parfum. Also a dark aquatic, does have a 
a cleanliness to it, maybe a little bit less clean smelling than Aqua de Jo Profumo, a little smokier, a little bit more brooding. It smells more like a dark ocean, maybe more salty. There's a little bit of a fruity quality that's shrouded by all this dark aquatic wood and a little bit of this suede leather feel that is kind of sexy and very masculine on the skin and performs very well. If you haven't yet checked this one out, I am not guaranteeing you're gonna love it. I'm not even saying you're gonna like it if you like Aqua Dijon, but you might. They are both aquatic. If you're an aquatic fan, you'll probably find this an interesting take on an aquatic, which is a breath of fresh air if you're asking me. That's Kenzo Om Eau de Parfum. Check it out, the link's down below. This is a love or hate it, not because it doesn't smell great, it does smell great, but people complain about the performance. I did a whole video about performance recently. You should check that out here if you haven't. I think there's some very interesting points that I would love your feedback on. From Raja Parfum, we have Elysium. This is the original Parfum Cologne version of Elysium. I describe this as versatile, fresh, and just easy. Easy every day. It's a no-brainer. You could wear this every single day of your life and it would fit. It would work for everything. And it's going to smell effortless to anyone around you. It's just going to make sense as far as a fragrance goes. This is what people expect clean fragrances to kind of smell like. But it is high quality. Don't get me wrong. There is something special here. It's not just your average run of the mill. Now, currently, this is only sitting at just shy of 3,000 volts, which again is no slouch. That's a lot of traffic. And we know how popular this fragrance is. To be honest, I was a little surprised not to see more votes than that, but we know that people have been talking about this for some time. I've been one of them. Maybe simple, but not basic. That's Elysium. Let's see what we would replace it with. This fragrance also comes across as rather simple, but good quality and definitely not basic or run of the mill, but easy to wear. Just the same as Elysium from Commodity. This is Moss Plus. This is a part of their Scent Space collection, I think is what it's called. And each fragrance in the collection has three iterations. The plus one is the bold one. This is the one that, as they put on the bottle, for me and everyone else, which I think is very fitting. To put it simply, this is fresh citrusy moss. There is a green dry woodiness, but there is this fresh, bright, zingy bergamot, and it dries down just more woody, maybe a little bit musky, and it performs well. It doesn't change all that much on the skin, but I do love the bubble that I get when I wear this. It is very attractive, but it's clean, and it's understated in its profile and its personality. It's not a special scent profile, but it's one that almost any person will find at least pleasant when they smell it on you, whether or not they tell you. But I think it is a worthwhile replacement to Roger Parfum Elysium if you're looking for something a little different. It might remind you a touch of Aventus, but it's more like they extracted the fresh, citrusy, mossy aspects of Aventus and put it into a bottle, kind of. Let me know if you've tried Moss Plus. There will be a link down below. And the final hype beast. I don't know if this one is talked about quite as much these days because it's flankers that have come out since have gotten a lot of limelight. So it's still getting its hype, but the others are kind of taking the spotlight right now. But this is Ultramall from Jean-Paul Gaultier or Ultra Male. I still to this day don't really know how to say it, but I don't care. Almost 9,000 votes on Ultramall. No surprise. It's been out over 10 years now, and it's been the subject of so many sexy panty dropper, get all the ladies type of videos, which has made guys go goo goo over it. And hopefully, the ladies too, if that was your intention with buying it. It's sweet, it's playful, it's boisterous. Very, very candy sweet. I get pear and vanilla. There's a fresh lavender feel, but there's also this warm, spicy cinnamon. It is sexy, but this sounds weird in a young way. Whoa, brother, whoa, 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 whoa. You're too young to be trying to be sexy. You can be sexy later on. This has gotten a lot of talk. What else can we talk about? From Gucci, a fragrance that has grown on me. It is a very approachable profile achieved in a very unusual way. This is Gucci Guilty. Guilty Eau de Parfum. It does remind me of the original Gucci Guilty, but there's something different here. You have a strange combination of rose, salt, and balsamic vinegar. It does come across as a little bit fresh, a little bit sweet and floral, but there is this very interesting saltiness playing with the sweetness, bringing a unique nuance that mainly comes across up close. But in the air, there is this slightly different darkness to the scent, to the otherwise fresh sweetness, which is a very tried and true combination for mainstream fragrance, but it, again, it's a little different, just a little bit. You might miss it if you just smell it in the air, but if you smell it up close, you'll realize they actually put some thought into this. And I think it can function just the same as Ultramall, except as I've been saying, more interesting. So if you're looking for a slightly interesting fragrance that
that still functions very well as an attractive option for those fun nights out. If you want to have a playful vibe, check out Gucci Guilty Eau de Parfum. Once again, let me know what you think of the series. If you want to see more of these, I can try to scrap more of them together, but it's going to depend on you. So your feedback really matters. Leave a like if you liked the video and let me know down in the comments what you think of these fragrances and if you think you'd like to see more of the series. And there will be links to everything I've talked about down in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.